Today's video is brought to you by Audible. It's not okay for you to be a weak loser. It's not okay. And the reason it's not okay is because you could be way more than that. And it's a crime, an ethical crime, for you to allow all that necessary potential to go to waste. It hurts you, it hurts your family, it hurts the world. Really, really, it does. And people think, oh, okay, I get it. And they do get it, because they know at some level. If you turn around and you confront the suffering voluntarily, you find out that you are way tougher than you think. It's not that life is better than you think. Life is as harsh as you think. It might even be worse, but you are way tougher than you think if you turn around and confront it. And so then what you discover is that there's a spirit within you that, pursues some, that can pursue something meaningful, that has the resilience and the strength to contend properly with the catastrophe of existence without becoming bitter. That's actually the central, so, mm. and I would say that's one of the central themes of 12 Rules for Life, is that make no mistake about it, like the first noble truth of Buddhism, life is suffering, this is true, and it's worse than that, because it's suffering contaminated by malevolence. That's the baseline, but, and so that's very pessimistic, but the optimistic part is that you are so damn tough, you can actually not only deal with that, you can improve it. Mm. It's like, hmm, oh, well that's a horrible situation, but it turns out that I'm armed for the task. Well, that's, that's a great thing for people to know. And I do believe, I think the fact that we're armed for the task is even more true than the fact that life is catastrophe contaminated by malevolence. We're stronger than things are terrible. So, and things are pretty terrible. So that means we're pretty damn strong. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's a very good thing to know. And it's not naive optimism. Yeah. It's a very different thing. It's like, no, things are terrible. They're brutal. And you are so damn tough, you can't believe it. You know, the idea that in some sense you're an eternal victim. Well, there's a truth in that, given that nature is conspiring to destroy you and will be successful in the end, that you're undermined by your own society at the same time you're buttressed by it, and that you're a, a target of your own malevolence and that of others. I mean, so there's plenty, there's, there's a triad of tragic and malevolent forces that are aimed directly at your heart, and that's always the case. But... But to not take responsibility for that and to attribute, attribute to that to, to a cosmic injustice or a soci sociological injustice in some sense that's aimed particularly at you, that's somehow the fault of others, is to miss the great adventure of your life. In that adoption of that adventurous mode of being, there's a deep meaning to be found. Right, a meaning maybe that transcends just you, that involves your family and that involves your community and maybe even the destiny of humanity itself. But there's nothing about that that's secure or easy and very little that has to do with happiness. The, the idea that your problems should be solved for you, let's say, and that it's unfair that you have them, well, it, 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 it's attractive in that there's nothing for you to do except complain. But, but it's horrifying in that there's nothing for you to do except complain. The difficulty is actually, the funny thing is, is the difficulty is actually the destiny. And it is insanely difficult, but maybe you're insanely up to the task. The problem with the pursuit of happiness is that when life's storms come along, happiness disappears, and then you're left with nothing. And so you need to pursue something that's deeper than happiness. And if happiness comes along, well then, hooray for you. You don't want to despise it because it's fleeting, but it's much better to pursue things that are meaningful than things that make you happy. It's deeper and, and it orients you more appropriately and it, and it keeps you centered in your own life. It makes you more useful for your family and your community. So a lot of what people find in life that provides them with a sustaining meaning is a consequence of not the pursuit of rights or the pursuit of happiness or, or, the, or, the, or the development of self-esteem, but the adoption of responsibility. And the more responsibility, in some sense, the better. 
responsibility for yourself, for making sure that your life lays itself out like it should, responsibility for your family, responsibility for the community. It's people who take responsibility that are the ones that you admire, and that's the right pathway through life. That's where meaning is to be found. And I think that's probably the crucial issue, is that ide identification of a profound relationship between responsibility and meaning. And for many of the people that I'm talking with, it seems like that's the first time that that's been articulated for them. If you want to hear more insights from Dr. Jordan Peterson, we highly recommend checking out his book, 12 Rules for Life. You can listen to the entire audiobook for free when you use our link at audible.com slash afterschool or text afterschool to 500-500. 12 Rules for Life contains 12 simple yet empowering rules to achieve success. Jordan Peterson may be the most misrepresented person in history, but there is no denying straightforward wisdom in his teachings. On Audible, his audiobooks are all narrated in his own voice, and they are useful if you're short on time. Audible is great for listening while you commute or during a workout. And right now, Amazon Prime members can start an Audible membership and save 66% on the first three months. Just go to audible.com slash afterschool or text afterschool to 500-500. You will pay just $4.95 per month for the first three months. After that, it's only $14.95 per month. This offer is only good from July 1st to the 31st. So start listening today.